So if the monthly bill is $100 a month, but if I pay annually, I save $100. $200 on the so instead of paying $1,200, pay a thousand bucks. That's a 20% savings, $200 plus $1,000 through the card, 3% cash back, 30 bucks on a thousand bucks, $230 in savings. Do that compounded over so many expenses over a 12 month period that was resulting in my favor of multiple thousands of dollars in cash savings. That's cash back into my economy. I kept, guess where that money went? I pushed it into the life insurance. That life insurance policy is now growing at a rate of return. So basically I used expenses in a very, very, very strategic way. Combination of multiple factors, not just the policy itself, not just borrowing and paying any bill you want, but paying very specific bills through credit cards, getting the maximized cashback rewards. And on top of that particular credit card, getting the cashback rewards within the first 90 days, I'm getting two, three, four, five hundred dollars in statement credit for running $3,000 worth of expenses on that card. And that card is 0% on purchases for 12 months. So I allow the expenses to sit in a credit card at 0% cost, get all that cash back rewards, the money that's in my income that was already going to be allocated to the ex expenses, I pushed it all into the life insurance. Now, now the money is sitting in cash value and it's growing. By the time I borrow the money out to pay the credit card off in full, what I gained in cash back rewards, savings, statement credit, reduction of the bill itself, plus what I'm being credited in the cash value, whether it was year one, two, three, four, whatever it is, that created a positive arbitrage. But again, even despite all of that, we're only talking a couple thousand dollars-ish in, in terms of a gain. So did it work? Yes. Should everyone do it? I don't think so. I think the vast majority will mess it up, if I'm being honest. I mean, we're talking, you have to be very methodical, very disciplined. You have to have multiple things have to work. You have to obviously get the policy in place at a certain point in time in the year then you have to get a certain credit card with certain amount of cashback rewards with a certain amount of bills that you can reduce, hold it on the card, pay the monthly minimum payment, and then have enough capital up front to front load the policy so that there's enough cash value in there to borrow and pay off all those bills and then rinse and repeat. And you got to do that over and over again. So I actually personally experimented this and did this for a couple of years. And I can honestly tell you that did it work? Yes, it worked, just not as efficiently as I initially had thought. Now you could also make the argument, well, Denzel, you're, you're talking about running 20 plus thousand dollars worth of bills. And, and once that dollar enters your cash value, that dollar is going to earn for the rest of your life. So you could say over the long haul projection of say 20, 30, 40, 50 years, Oh, absolutely. A phenomenal positive arbitrage gain. No doubt whatsoever. Here's the problem. If you were to do that every single year and not pay back the loan, see, that's the issue here. If you don't pay back the loan, you now have a much bigger interest cost every single year that you're floating the expense and keeping it in the policy. That's going to be a problem long term. So what I do is I bought time in the early years to get that max funded dollar amount in there as my income grew, because not only did I borrow just to run bills, but I also borrowed to invest in the business and grow the income and grow my knowledge and, and education. Now more income is coming in. I no longer need to do that. I can just keep running the bills through the credit card, get all the points I want in the world, just keep doing that. I don't have to keep pulling to cover expenses. So eventually I pay down the loans. I pay down the interest. I always pay the interest upfront out of pocket, not from the insurance policy, not from the cash value, because that'll interrupt the compounded growth. And then that's where you get these problems. So we're talking about, we're just talking about seven to 10 levels deep here on running bills through a policy, offsetting the interest cost, creating a positive arbitrage. Can it be done? Yes. How are the results? Not as great as if you would have taken that money and say invested it in your business, try to increase your income, try to take that money and actually increase the top line rather than the bottom line. You're going to do a much better job increasing, I would argue. Okay, But if you were to do what I do, it's you're, you're trying to solve for a particular issue circumstance for a temporary period of time. It's not a permanent strategy. So 
running your income through a policy and then living out of the policy is not a permanent strategy in my opinion. It's not a wealth building strategy in my opinion. It's a buying time type of a strategy, buying you the time, buying you the insurance, buying you the, the max funded, getting able, getting to that max funded amount if you don't have the capital or cash flow, now you're leveraging debt or you're leveraging expenses to do a thing and then you're getting two uses out of the dollars. But that is not a long-term play. So I'm someone that actually did that to prove that, hey, it doesn't really work like they're saying. As a content creator, educator that has done it, practice it, I'm saying, hey, this is probably, this isn't your get rich, get wealth, get very wealthy plan here, permanent strategy. I don't recommend running all your income or majority of your income through a policy, barring out to pay bills and live off of it. That is not a long-term play. It is a short-term play. And if you go back and watch my videos, you'll see me touch on that. Where I'm like, you know, eventually we want to invest, make more money. You want to buy whatever time you want to buy right now because you're trying to start early, let's say. You're trying to lock in that health benefit now. You're trying to lock in, you know, a, a properly designed policy younger and get a higher MEC limit and you're trying to max fund it to, to get as much money in there growing early in the early years so that in the later years you really start to see the compounded effect. That's only going to work if you what? Increase the income so that you can eventually pay back the policy loan, pay the interest and continue to max fund the policy, right? So in my example here, if I'm borrowing 100, 100K and let's say my max funding amount is 70,000 a year, right? Like that's, that is my number that I pay into my guardian policy every year is 70,000 bucks. So I need to have the 70 plus the loan interest, whatever I carry in that year, 5,660. And I need to pay that out of pocket plus max fund to continue to have that positive arbitrage. And even then the number's not that crazy internally. It's the external I'm all about. What did I do with the hundred? How efficient was I with the hundred? And I'm here to tell you that if you're running bills through your policy, running expenses, and you're not doing the other three to four elements that I incorporated with the credit card and the cash back rewards and the statement credits and, and then the 0% for 12 months, paying the monthly minimum, if you're not doing none of those, you're under an illusion. You're what my fiance says, Delulu. You're being Delulu. You're not running the math properly and you need to run the math more efficiently, more effectively. So that is for you, the customer or the agent out there that is a new, you're starting to create content, you're getting yourself out there, you're building a following. Run the extra math behind it, right? Let's not, let's not get ourselves in trouble, right? So I've always been a person that loves to run the math. And then even then I create, I create uh, overestimations where let's say the loan interest rate, the fixed rate regarding is, is, is 5%. Like typically what I do is I will underestimate the internal rate of return on the cash value. So I'll intentionally lower it to see if there's positive gain and in a worst case scenario. And if there is, then I'm like, well, for sure, it's going to do better than what I'm illustrating. And that's usually what I do with my velocity banking case studies, my infinite banking case studies. I'm always making it look worse than what it is. And then an actual application turns out to look way better.